this feast he's prepared for us. Not just this week, not just last week, but for the next 10 weeks that are coming. It's amazing what he's done in every last one of us. And I want to thank you all for being so, so transparent with the things that you've shown. I want to thank you guys for being there for me when I need you. But right now, I really want to thank God more than anybody for what he's done in my life. And I want to thank you, Pastor Mike. This part that's going to get me. Three years ago, when I first started coming to this church, I was coming in on the back end of something that really bothered me, wore me up. And when I first got here, I was in a position where I literally had nothing the clothes on my back and the car that I was sleeping in in this parking lot right out these doors here. That's what I had. But there's one thing I had still locked down deep inside my spirit and in my heart and in my soul that I can never get away from no matter how hard I try. And today I don't want to try anymore. But when I walked through these doors I found out this is home. So Pastor Mike Words cannot describe how grateful I am to you for being obedient to God and coming to Jacksonville. Amen. With that said, let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing in these labs, and the things that you are going to do in all of our lives, not just in the labs, but Every Wednesday, every Sunday, every time the doors to this church is open, and Pastor Mike is ministering, Pastor Connie's ministering, the elders, Lord, because of all of their obedience and their willingness to do what you have asked of them, the rest of us are here and the rest of us have been changed. So, Lord, I turn myself over to you. I yield my members to you. Speak through me because these are your people and they're here to hear from you. They're not here to hear from a man, but they're here to hear from you. Minister to these people. They're precious people. They're your people. And you're the only one who can do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and be seated, please. With that done, uh, go ahead and turn to John chapter 17. I'm going to start off with probably my most favorite bi verse in the entire Bible. And there's a reason for it. And by the time I'm done today, you're going to see why. Um, this is something that's been locked up in my spirit now probably for about 20 years. It's something that has changed my life. And really to say changed my life would be an underestimation of, of what it really did. It was more like it came in and completely revolutionized who I am as a human being, as a person, everything about me. And three, about two years ago, two and a half years ago, when I believed that the Lord had called me or told me to join this church, I had absolutely no qualms about joining this church because the word that this man of God brings to us is so true, so true. Day after day, service after service, every time I come through these doors, there's something that comes out of this man or woman of God or the elders that when I'm behind those cameras, it's all I can do to stay disciplined enough to stay on those cameras. <laughs> there are times I'm literally dancing back there. I call it the camera dance because I'm, lit I'm, I'm dancing, but I'm holding the camera <laughs> still, you know. Just, just, I'm wanting to get up and run. It's the truth. It's, it's more than, than, than just a book with black and white type or red and white type. This is a schoolmaster, as the word says. A schoolmaster that teaches us about the real word of God, the living word of God. And I'll get around to that shortly. And sometimes life can get pretty complicated where we get so tied up 
in the details of life, sometimes we need to be reminded that there is a forest despite all of the trees that we're looking at. And I believe that's why God brought me here today, is not only to remind me, but to remind all of us, hey, sometimes take a step back and look at the big picture. So today the topic, the message that I'm bringing you today is the cycle of life, the big picture. The first thing that I want to go over with you in the cycle of life, the big picture, is what is faith, okay? A lot of us, when the word faith is mentioned, a lot of us will come up with several scriptures that talk about what faith is and what what it's all about, but I'm going to tie this into the big picture for you today so that you can see that Things go a lot farther than just some of the details that we that we get on a Wednesday or a Sunday service. And the best way that I know how to do this is to kind of lay this out in picture form. Faith, we know, comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, right? We know that in order for us to hear the Word of God, it has to be preached. In order for it to be preached, somebody has to be sent. And that's where the cycle of life starts. So right here... You have the sent one of God, sent one to preach the word of God. So once it's preached, I'll put a P there for preach. Once it's preached, it can be heard. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a chain here. But once it's heard is where the key stuff starts coming in. There's a key element about faith that many of us have a tendency to forget about. And it's in a very small verse off in Hebrews that's actually a part B to a verse that most of us tend to have overlook. When I saw it, it totally changed everything for me. It says, faith which works by love. And then I sat there and thought about 1 Corinthians chapter 4 where it talks about three things remaining when it's all said, done, and over with. Faith hope, and love, but love being the greatest of the three. Why is that? Well, that's what I'm about to go over right now. Love, and I'll put faith and hope in here, because faith and hope are the children of love. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you see in there that love believes all things and it hopes all things. So faith and hope are produced out of love. So when we hear the word preached, it gets down deep on the inside of us and reaches a hold of that love that was put in our hearts by God right from the very beginning, right from the very beginning of our existence in his own mind and in his own spirit and soul. And that pulls and tugs at the hope that we know because the word of God has has been written on our hearts. And when that hope comes forth, Now we know faith, obviously, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, that is where now we get to a point where, yes, we believe. And then the last part about faith is that the power is so compelling that it brings us to a point of obedience. And at this point, this is where we make a confession. We make the confession that Jesus is Lord. We are a sinner in need of a Savior. And the five understandings of complete salvation take place. And this, this is where we step into the cycle of life. This is where we get translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But it had to begin with someone being sent and someone preaching. Now John chapter 17 that I had you turn to, verse 3. I said it's my favorite verse in all the Bible, so I'm just going to quote it to you. I don't even need to look this one up because I've spent so much time on this verse. It's not funny. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. There's two important things about this verse that I need to go over with you in order for the rest of this to make sense. Boy, I'm running short on time. There's so much to do, but this thing could go in so many different directions. It's unbelievable. I challenge y'all to go home and study this. I, I really do. You will spend the rest of your life studying this out. 